Good day everyone. In this video, I will be discussing memory management and virtual memory management. Here are some key terms that you need to know for this topic. Let us first define what is memory management is. Memory management is a feature of an operating system that handles or manages primary memory and moves processes between main memory and disk during execution. Memory management keeps track of all memory locations, whether they are allocated to a process or are free. It also uh, determines how much memory will be allocated to process. It determines which processes will have access to memory at what time. It also keeps track of when memory is freed or unallocated and updates the status accordingly. So, why is memory management important? Memory management is important because the amount of main memory available in a computer system is very limited. Memory management is critical to the computer system. Memory management in a computer system has different roles. They are used to keep track of whether memory locations are free or allocated. Second, they enable computers with limited main memory to run programs that are larger than the size of amount of available memory. Another is they are in charge of preventing other processes from corrupting the memory allocated to each process. And lastly, they allow processes to share memory space. There are two memory management schemes, the Continuous Memory Management Scheme and the Non-Continuous Memory Management Scheme. Each program in a Continuous Memory Management Scheme occupies a single contiguous block of storage locations, like a set of memory locations with consecutive addresses. While in non-continuous memory management scheme, the program is divided into different blocks and loaded at different portions of the memory that do not have to be adjacent to one another. This scheme is classified based on the size of the block and whether or not the blocks are in main memory. Contiguous memory management scheme has two classifications, single contiguous memory management scheme and multi-partitioning. Single contiguous memory management scheme is the most basic memory management scheme that was used in the first generation of computer systems. In this scheme, the main memory is divided into two contiguous areas or partitions. The operating system are installed permanently in one partition, usually at a lower memory level, while the user processes are loaded into the other partition. There are different advantages of a single contiguous memory management scheme. They are, first, they are simple to put into action, they are simple to manage and design, and once a process is loaded in a single contiguous memory management scheme, it receives full processor time and is not interrupted by any other processor. Now, contiguous or single contiguous memory management schemes also has disadvantages, which are unused memory waste memory space because the process is unlikely to use all of the uh, 
use all of the uh, available memory space. Another is while the disk loads the binary image into main memory, the CPU remains idle. Another is the program cannot be executed if it is not too large to fit in the available main memory space. And lastly, it does not support multi-programming, which means that it cannot run multiple programs concurrently. The second class of continuous memory management scheme is the multi-partitioning. Now, the single, con uh, single continuous memory management scheme is inefficient because it uh, restricts computers to run only one program at a time, wasting memory space and also CPU time. Now, multi-programming, which uh, allows multiple programs to run concurrently, can solve the problem of inefficient CPU use. Operating systems must load both uh, processes into main memory in order to switch between them. To load multiple processes into main memory, the uh, operating system must divide the available main memory into multiple parts. And as a result, multiple processes can exist in main memory at the same time. The, multi, uh, the multiple partitioning scheme can be of two types, the uh, fixed partitioning and the dynamic partitioning. In a fixed partition memory management scheme, or sometimes you call it as static partitioning, the uh, main memory is divided into several fixed size partitions. These partitions may be the same or different sizes. Each, com uh, each partition can only hold one process. Now, the number of partitions determines the degree of multi-programming or the maximum number of processes that can be stored in memory. Now, these partitions are created during system generation and remain fixed afterwards. The uh, dynamic partitioning scheme, on the other hand, was created to address the uh, shortcomings of a fixed partitioning scheme. In a dynamic partitioning scheme, each process only takes up as much memory as it needs when it is loaded for processing. Requested processes are given memory until the physical memory is depleted or the remaining space is insufficient to hold the requesting process. The partitions used in this scheme are of variable size and the number of partitions is not specified at the time the system is created. The next memory management scheme is the non-continuous memory management. It has two subclasses, which are the uh, paging and segmentation. Paging is a technique that eliminates the need of contiguous main memory allocation. Now, the main memory is divided into fixed blocks of physical memory known as frames in this scheme. In order to maximize main memory and avoid external fragmentation, the size of a frame should be kept at the same as that of page. Some advantages of paging includes page uh, reduce external fragmentation, simple to implement, memory efficient. Now, due to the size or equal size of frames, swapping because becomes very easy. It is used for faster access of data and so on and so forth. Now, the next subclass under the non-contiguous memory management is segmentation. Segmentation is a technique that uh, eliminates the need for contiguous main memory allocation. 
the uh, main memory is divided into variable size blocks of physical memory known as segments in this scheme. It is uh, based on how the programmer structures the programs. Each job is divided into several segments of varying sizes, one for each module with uh, segmented memory allocation. Such modules include functions, subroutines, stacks, arrays, and so on. The next topic is the virtual memory management. So what is a virtual memory management or what is virtual memory management? Now, virtual memory management is a storage mechanism that gives the user the impression that he or she has a large main memory. It is achieved by reclassifying a portion of secondary memory uh, as primary memory. Now, processes that are larger in size than the available main memory can be stored in virtual memory by the user. The question is, why do we need a virtual memory? Now, here are some reasons for using virtual memory. First, when a computer's physical memory is full, it, write, uh, it writes what it needs to remember to the hard disk in the form of a swap file which serves as virtual memory. Uh, another reason is when a computer is running Windows requires more memory or RAM, the system uses a small portion of the hard drive for this purpose. Virtual memory management has different tasks. It includes maintaining the virtual memory with a reasonable current copy of memory, keeping the page tables current, and responding to page faults by loading the requested memory frames into physical memory. And that's it for this topic. Thanks for watching.